Raiders. The Beatles fight back with their most effective weapon, rapid evolution. Random mutations are occurring all the time, and every once in a while one of those mutations will confer resistance. There is no argument. In the fields and grain elevators of Kansas, in just a few years, beetles have evolved that can survive deadly pesticides. There is no argument. In the medical clinics there, new variations of the HIV virus strains have evolved to survive the body's best defenses. But in the schools in Kansas, there is a raging argument. The theory of evolution is the focus of a major battle. I think the reason that evolution was looked at is because of the way it was addressed in the national standards. Like it was a fact, like it was beyond question, like it was beyond investigation. No, I think the evidence is lacking to say that it's a fact. Evolution did happen. There is a body of knowledge that says millions of years ago the species split and that we are we're, we're mammals. We're part of that system. The political fight in Kansas is just a recent skirmish in a drawn-out conflict. In the century and a half since Darwin published his theory, there has been a seesaw battle over the teaching of evolution in American schools. The Scopes trial in Tennessee in 1925 focused world attention on the war between science and the Bible. The press immediately headlined it, the monkey trial. Quiet children, it's not King Kong, it's Mr. Ape, symbol of the monkey trial. John Scopes had been charged with teaching evolution, that man had evolved from lower animals, an idea that had been banned as a subject in the schools of Tennessee. He was convicted, fined, and later the conviction was overturned. Forty-two years later, the law was overturned. Times have changed, but polls continue to show the country split. Almost half of all American citizens believe that God created man in his present form within the last 10,000 years. Science seems to be losing. I refer to evolution as science fraud. John Baumgartner has led a fundamentalist crusade to ban evolution as a requirement in New Mexico science classes. Science. The irony is that Baumgartner is a scientist, a geophysicist at the Los Alamos National Laboratory. If you want to look at the logical structure of my belief, it's rooted and grounded on the person of Jesus, person of Jesus Christ. I've concluded that he is authentic. As a government scientist, Baumgartner has created a sophisticated computer modeling program of the Earth's inner structure. It is used by scientists around the world to model the dynamics of the Earth's core. But when Baumgartner cranks in his own data, it models a catastrophic eruption that he believes spawned Noah's flood, as described in the Bible. There never was this long sequence of generations. All the animals that we see in the rock record have lived only within the last 5,000 years. The Bible basically says that it was the wickedness of man, just the rampant evil that was covering the earth that God brought this destruction. Baumgartner and other scientists, who are also religious fundamentalists, insist that scientific evidence supports the biblical story. They know they're right because they read it in their holy book. And what they don't seem to realize is that there are hundreds of origin myths, hundreds of stories from cultures all around the world. Some American Indian tribes believe that their people originated when the tribe followed a mole who guided them, tunneling up out of the underworld. Hindus believe that various groups came from different parts of the original supreme being. For them, the myth is metaphor, not to be taken literally. This supreme being was visualized as the universal person. His head are the thinkers, and his hands are the righteous rulers. Science is the one story which is unique because there's evidence for it. There's no evidence for any of the other creation myths, beautiful and poetic as they are. Science is the one that has the evidence going for it. But finding the evidence in evolution can be very difficult at times. In the case of a giraffe, it seems obvious. 
Each intermediate stage leading to a longer neck would have brought continual survival advantage as the animals nibbled leaves from higher and higher up the trees. Understanding how other animals developed is often much harder. An angler fish goes fishing for its meals by bobbing a bait-like blob on an appendage sticking out of its head. Curiosity can be fatal. But how could this have resulted from incremental stages in evolution? Half a pole on the top of the head would not seem of much use. This objection that what, what advantage would the intermediate stages have is the oldest one in the book. What the fishing rod which sticks out from the top of the anglerfish's back is, it's a modified spine from the dorsal fin. Over millions of generations, mutations leading to a loose spine would have attracted hungry fish in the dark murky water. And thus the angler, equipped with a spiny pole, would have survival advantage. However, creationists argue that such an explanation is not science, but a leap of faith. Everyone is basing his or her life on unprovable assumptions. Uh, evolutionists, for example, have an assumption that th the laws of nature uh, that, we, that we study can give rise to living systems. Most creationists will agree that there is a process they term microevolution. Viruses, beetles, weeds. But they refuse to accept that the same science also applies to big, complex organisms. There is no mechanism that can generate the kinds of changes, major changes, we see in the major types of plants and animals. How did such a complex organism as the eye develop? Was there a guiding intelligence behind it all? Evolutionary scientists like Richard Dawkins say, absolutely not. When people have actually done calculations on how long it would take, to evolve, even something as legendarily complicated as an eye, it's turned out that it would take a time so short that you could scarcely measure it on the geological time scale. Dawkins points to the fact that some primitive cells were sensitive to light. They could tell night from day. To better sense motion, groups of light sensing cells gradually evolved into eye pits. Later, a transparent lining, which might have evolved originally for protection, could have developed over many generations into a primitive lens across the top of the pit. More eons, and the result? A sophisticated eye such as that of the rare Galapagos hawk. Even if you were able to point to some animal where neither you nor I could think of what the possible intermediates are, my response to that would be, let's go and think a bit harder. Just because you don't believe it, or just because you don't understand it, and just because I don't understand it, is probably a limitation of our imagination rather than strong evidence against the theory. Evolutionary scientists are concerned about a misconception people have about evolution. It is the assumption that there is a direction to it all, that bacteria are the lowest forms and humans are the end result. This 1930s museum display is one example. Fish became lizards, became apes, became humanoids, became...